Thanks for checking out this movie review video. This is for the 2023 film The Wrath of Becky, and I purchased it, well, rented it through Vudu, which is a, a company owned by Fandango where you can stream digital movies. You can either buy them digitally or rent them digitally. This literally was like three bucks to rent, so super cheap. Always glad to support films like this, uh, and it's a fun film. I'll tell you off the top. This is a no-spoiler review, but I do recommend checking this film out. Even though I'm not rating it, like, super high, it's still a fun time. Um, it's not, like, the most amazing film ever made, but there's a lot of good stuff about it. But let's get into it. <clears throat> Excuse me. Uh, written and directed by Matt Angel and Suzanne Coote, uh, who also did The Open House and Hypnotic. Uh, Sean William Scott plays uh, the main villain in this one, which is another comedic actor like Kevin James in the first one kind of taking on a more messed up sinister villain role so I like that they did that when I saw the first film and I do have a review no spoiler review for that on my channel from when it came out I believe I do I'm pretty sure I do uh, but when I saw the first one I was like oh my gosh Kevin James doing a not just a serious role but like a seriously horrible person role like a disgusting vile evil villain and he did a really good job, and it was really nice. And so here I like that they kind of replicated that and had Sean William Scott do the same thing. And just like how Kevin James did a really good job in the first film, Sean William Scott does a really good job in this one. But I also have to say while I'm talking about actors, what sells this film or who sells this film is Lulu Wilson, who plays Becky, who also played Becky in the first film. She sold it in the first film. She sells it in this one. I even feel like she does... Maybe a little bit better in this because it seems like she's kind of relishing the role even more in this one and kind of enjoying it and having fun with it. So um, she did in the first one, but it seems like more so in this one. So quick synopsis. What's the deal with The Wrath of Becky? Very similar to the first one. Kind of follows a very simi similar formula. It picks up after you know, well, not right after the events of the first one, but some years later when she's kind of trying to put her life back together, but she's still a badass. And she kind of does this voiceover kind of talking about where her life's gone and how she has to, you know, remain vigilant and kind of prepare for anything in life, basically, because the events of the first film have really changed her. Um, and then she runs afoul of some more bad guys. These are kind of domestic terrorist type individuals who are part of what you're perceived to be like a hate group. Uh, so still keeping it very topical like they did in the first film. And those are the types of people you like to see her get revenge against because they cross her, she takes revenge, and it's very much like the first film. So it's a revenge film. And it's a pretty solid revenge film in my opinion, just like the first one. So the beginning of it strikes a very nice humorous tone, which I really enjoyed. They did a really good job of kind of putting the humor into it. So uh, Angel and Coot, I think, did a really nice job with writing the script, but also with the directing. So these two multi-talented, obviously, because there are a lot of instances where the people who direct do not write and people who write do not direct. But these two, people to watch, I think, personally. Um, so I love the humorous tone. And I love the fact that the humor that is espoused in this is actually, like... I wouldn't say necessarily like laugh out loud funny, but it, it is funny. Um, I did internally, you know, receive a lot of it and kind of be like, oh, that's clever. Or, that's kind of funny, but didn't laugh out loud while I'm watching by myself because, you know, it's very uncommon that I do that. But um, I enjoyed it. I like the humor and the humor does stay throughout the entire film, which I think was another smart choice to keep it like upbeat and fun. Uh, they give a quick recap of the first movie. I'm not sure they really needed to, honestly, just because there's not a lot of connective tissue between the first one and the second one, but I understand why they did it, because if some people are like, oh, this is the second film, like, do I need to watch the first one? They don't want people to feel like they have to have watched the first one, or like stuff is really being spoiled. So I understand why they did it. I don't think they necessarily needed it, but it is relatively quick when they do it, so that's fine. Uh, the dialogue, I was talking about how well written this is, um, a bunch of aspects of it, but the dialogue in particular is very well written. It feels extremely realistic, and much like the humor aspect of it, they keep the dialogue very kind of like light and fun, um, which adds to that overall feel of the film that I'm talking about, just being kind of like upbeat and a fun time, even though it's messed up and serious at the same time. Um... 
it's obvious who will end up crossing Becky, and you want them to get what's coming to them. Just like in the first film, these are terrible people who are painted in the most sour of lighting. They look awful, they seem awful, and you're just like, yes, I cannot wait for them to cross Becky, and then Becky gives them their comeuppance, basically. Um, you're rooting for Becky the entire time like you did in the first film, because these are clearly horrendously terrible people. Um, there's something that happens about 19 minutes in that will be hard for some people to see. Uh, I'm just going to say it right now. It is animal-related. People who have problems with animal stuff, obviously it's not realistic, but just the idea of something happening to an animal can be very hard for some people. So this is kind of your trigger warning for that, about 19 minutes in. And then there's some other stuff later on with the same animal that is kind of like danger kind of seems like it's a little tense with that animal, so might be too much for some people to handle. Just want to give that information. Uh, the acting, like I've kind of already talked about, is really good. It's not just Lulu Wilson and Sean William Scott that do a really good job. I think the entire cast did a really nice job. It's just that Scott and Wilson really stick out as kind of leading the cast, and, you know, they're the biggest characters anyway, so it makes sense. Uh, there's some real nice camera work in this. They keep it light and fun and engaging, and there's a lot of kind of like cool camera movements, like little like zoom-ins and stuff like that, and interesting camera angles that keep things looking a little bit off-kilter, a little bit quirky, um, which again kind of enhances that feel of kind of like light and fun and upbeat stuff, which is always just interesting to me in films like this, where it's that we very weird just juxtaposition of like, terrible people and terrible things happening that are pretty gruesome and awful juxtaposed with just this upbeat like fun feeling it's very a, a weird dichotomy but it it's done in a lot of films the score is very effective uh at hitting those kind of intense moments when it really needs to hit intense moments but then also helping to maintain that upbeat fun feeling are you are you seeing a main theme in my in my review of this upbeat and fun uh yeah uh, there's also some nice gore. I need to I need to throw that out there. So for people who like good gore to films, this has some good gore to it. Um, it's not as much as I would have wanted. I do think that there probably should have been more uh, people to get theirs in this movie because there are some moments where it seems like they kind of were trying to fill a, a bit of runtime with some other stuff that didn't wasn't even really all that important to the overall film. Um, because you can tell, like, the whole point of this is about Becky and her getting her revenge. I mean, it's called The Wrath of Becky. That's what you're looking for in this film, and that's what the first film pretty much was. So just more of that would have been a lot better, but I have a feeling that maybe that wasn't the case because of potentially budget constraints. Just guessing, because you need to come up with more practical effects and more ways for people to get offed, and that stuff is harder to shoot and more expensive. Uh, plenty of times in film, voiceovers do not work. Now, I will say in this film, it does work. You have Becky giving some voiceover in the beginning. She pops in a few other times during the film, and I think it's very effective. I think, I, and a, a lot of it is because A, how it's written, and B, how uh, Lulu Wilson does it with her acting. Um, like I've already established, she does a great job. Not sure how I feel about something that they do towards the end of the film, almost like exactly at the end, but... They throw something in that I'm kind of like, okay, I see where they're kind of setting this up for more, but I don't really know how I feel about it. Part of me is like, it's kind of like too much and ridiculous and over the top, but then at the same time, like, I'm a little bit excited about it and like where that could lead things. So I was kind of like, I'm in the middle on that one. I'm not 100% sure. This is where I'd like to hear from other people about what your thoughts on, on that thing are, if you can, if you want to put it in the comments down there. The movie is fun from start to finish, but does have some dragging as it gets a bit lost in giving too much detail about something that's ult ultimately not that important to the movie itself. Again, that's that moment I was talking about where, or a few moments, where it seems like they're kind of like, eh, we need to stretch this runtime maybe a little bit, and because of budget constraints, we can't be killing more people off and, you know, stuff like that, so... And again, Lulu Wilson, excellent job. She sells this film. She is the point of this film, which makes sense because she is Becky. Now, uh, out of five stars with half stars in play, I'm going to give it a three-star rating. 
Um, I thought about giving it a three and a half. If it didn't have those dragging bits where it's just stuff that you're kind of like, why are we focusing on this right now? Uh, it definitely would have been a three and a half, but I think I'm going to hit it at a three, which is where I believe I put the original Becky. So that makes sense. For me, it's as good as the first film, which is nice. Um, good job. It's just films like this that don't have a lot of substance. They're just going to be fun. They're never going to get like huge ratings because they're not going for a lot of substance and they're not really going for things but there's a lot of good stuff in this film so this is where i'd love to hear other people's thoughts on it like i said go ahead and put it in the comments do me a favor please uh like this video if you like it at all subscribe to my channel if you like this video or any video i've ever done I, that's your best way to repay me for all the free content and you can also hit the notification bell button because then you know when i'm putting up new videos which i'm doing a lot and I appreciate everyone's support, but thank you so much for watching this video, and until next time, keep it brutal.